So one of my passions that I don't really talk about often is philosophy, okay? Not only do I love mental health and neuroscience, but I love philosophy because it kind of asks us to do some critical thinking. And I love just thought-provoking conversations or topics, and I love just different thought experiments. So with the whole Shane Dawson series about uh, Jake Paul and my recent video about Katie Morton and the backlash she's getting about sociopaths. I thought it'd be great to do a thought experiment with all of you and it was something that came to mind from one of your comments. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. I try to help you with your mental health. I try to educate people, decrease the stigma, increase awareness, all things mental health. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell because I make a ton, a ton of videos. So like when it comes to mental health, mental health is such a a broad kind of statement. And for me, just anything going on in the mind and how we react to situations involves mental health. How we get offended or how we get angry, how we get upset. You know, our emotions are a major part of mental health. And when you see on social media, like the backlash that Katie Morton got and Shane got and things like that, like, I, I think it's important to kind of ask ourselves these kind of questions and, you know, think like, what, what, where are my thoughts coming from? That's one of the reasons why I love meditation so much, because it helps me quiet my mind and kind of get curious about where these thoughts or these emotions are even coming from. So anyways, this uh, topic actually came up and it brought to mind this thought experiment from one of your comments. The comment actually came from Gingerbread. I am shocked that Shane and Katie didn't anticipate the backlash. People get offended over everything these days. Some people get offended when someone talks negatively about pedophiles. Calling someone gross seems like an obvious thing to avoid. However, I'm also annoyed with people portraying sociopaths as perfect angels. How do they wind up with the diagnosis if they are perfect angels? I want to have empathy for them, but I also want to be honest. I find it all very morally confusing. I appreciate your nuanced view. I can see both sides too. So yeah, like I, I'm, that, that's the kind of stuff I like. By the way, there's one of the reasons I love Philip DeFranco is because he kind of questions his own view sometimes on different topics and things like that. But um, when I read this, I responded and I said, yeah, the moral landscape is tricky and it's interesting. There's actually a book I read called The Moral Landscape where it made me question a lot of things that I believe about morality and everything like that. So uh, I told Gingerbread that, but it actually wasn't the book Moral Landscape. It was a book called Free Will. So the author of both of those books, Moral Landscape and Free Will, which I will link in the description below, are by an author by the name of Sam Harris. So Sam Harris, if you don't know who he is, he is controversial to some. He's kind of a modern day philosopher. He's an atheist. He's very outspoken on certain subjects, which I'm not gonna talk about on my channel because I don't even wanna get started. But anyways, I enjoy his work because he talks a lot about meditation and philosophy and neuroscience, just all the things that I love. So anyways, um, the, the book, The Moral Landscape is great, especially if you're someone who's into science and philosophy, but this book, Free Will, which this uh, thought experiment comes from, is very, very short. And it questions, it has this question, how much free will we actually have? You know what I mean? And you might not know what I mean. It's very interesting and it gets confusing, but like if you follow along with the book, it's very, very interesting. Because that's part of meditation is not getting attached to your thoughts and not judging yourself from your, uh, for your thoughts. Our thoughts pretty much just spring up out of a void and they come from seemingly nothingness. So we really have to question our free will and the decisions we make. But anyways, I'll shut my mouth and let's get started with this thought experiment. I was questioning whether I should do this, but I will just in case since my audience is growing. I just wanna give a trigger warning. Um, there is some violence talked about in this thought experiment but I need to do a video about trigger warnings. I saw something very interesting on it, like just by me mentioning a trigger warning might make people triggered. So I just wanted to do that as a courtesy. So if you get triggered by violence, like you can turn the video off. All right, but anyways, let's get started, okay? So I want you to just look at these five different cases and kind of just 
question things and ask yourself, you know? And then at the end, I'm gonna ask you to leave comments down below, all right? So we're gonna talk about five different cases that involve murder, okay? So case number one, a four-year-old boy is playing with a loaded gun and shoots and kills a young woman. This gun was left loaded and unprotected by the father. Case number two, a 12-year-old boy who has been the victim of consistent emotional and physical abuse is being teased by a young woman, so he takes his father's gun and he murders this young woman. Case number three, a 25-year-old man who has been the victim of continuous physical and emotional abuse most of his life, his girlfriend leaves him for another man and he shoots and kills this young woman. Case number four, a 25 year old man who had great parents. There was no abuse, he had just the ideal upbringing. He takes a loaded gun and he shoots and kills a young woman and when he's questioned about it, he did it quote unquote just for the fun of it. Case number five, a 25 year old man who has never been the victim of any type of abuse, also has great parents, he takes a loaded gun and he shoots and kills a young woman, quote unquote, just for the f fun of it. But when they do a brain scan on him, they find a golf ball sized tumor on his medial prefrontal cortex. This part of the brain is responsible for emotional regulation as well as impulse control. All right, so when you hear these different cases, so case number one and two, most of us would probably be a little bit more lenient, right? You have the case of a four-year-old and a 12-year-old. Both of these children, obviously a four-year-old, their brain is nowhere near fully developed, right? Then you have a 12-year-old who is the victim of constant abuse. Again, underdeveloped brain. But then you have case number three and case number four. These are 25-year-old adults. One of them, was the victim of this continuous abuse, but he did shoot and kill somebody. And then in case number five, you have a 25 year old man, but he has a brain problem that causes him to maybe be a psychopath, right? So that's something that, I don't know, I just, with all this conversation about sociopaths and in the last video I made about Katie Morton, they've discovered that the brains of sociopaths are actually different. They have decreased brain matter in part of the areas that I just talked about with that tumor being, okay? So this is just, this is one of those things where I don't talk about it much on my channel, but it's always something that comes to mind when I ever, whenever I see somebody like, um, who has done something awful, you know? I'm like, what's their history? What happened to them? And things like that. A lot of my empathy you know, has come from working in a drug and alcohol treatment center. I meet people where most people would say, these are terrible people for the things that they have done. The things they've done to their family, the things they've done to their friends, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. The list goes on and on. They've abandoned their children, all sorts of stuff. And a lot of people say, you know, addiction's a choice. But after sitting with some of these people for even five minutes and you hear just a little bit of their story, a little bit of their childhood, you're like, oh my God. Like, no wonder why you started abusing drugs. You know, you find out about the abuse they've been through and the traumas they've been through and all sorts of other things, right? So, I don't know. Like, it's just something interesting. Like, uh, as some of you know who have been subscribed for a while, I really try to teach people to be empathetic. Like, even for a moment, just try to put yourself in another person's shoes or, or think about, you know, what if this was somebody you knew and you knew their past, you knew about their traumatic history and things like that. And like, it's just an interesting topic. Like, you know, I, I mentioned in my last video about Katie Morton, like, humans, like people, I love everybody. I love everybody but I don't like everybody, you know? Like, but I'll say this. To end this video, I'll say this. My little boy, my nine-year-old son is sitting right over there. And this is why I am just such a huge advocate for good parenting. Like, I'm such a huge advocate for it. There are so many mental illnesses that are the result of childhood trauma. You know? So like we have to step our game up as parents. We have to make sure that we're not having a kid just for the sake of having a kid. We need to make sure we are 
bringing people into this world who can be nurtured emotionally and everything like that so they can develop properly or else they turn into these 25 year old men or women who do awful things and then we have to start questioning well is it their fault or is it their upbringing's fault you know how much free will did they have i i, I study a lot about neuroscience like traumatic events as a child they it is scientifically proven to rewire the brain you know what i mean but anyways um i really am excited to kind of do something you know a little bit more philosophical you know a little thought experiment again gingerbread thank you for commenting and making me think of this thought experiment but i want to hear from all of you let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below, okay? But that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I'm always making videos about mental health, so make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You help support me in doing something I love, which is helping people with their mental health. If you wanna support the channel on Patreon, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month. That's it, and you get your name right here, all right? <laughs> the link's right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.